Pearl Harbor, March 26, 1963. At the invitation of President John F. Kennedy, His Majesty King Hassan II of Morocco is making his first state visit to the United States of America. He receives a special welcome. stop on the King's American tour is the historic city of Philadelphia. In Independence Hall, the American Declaration of Independence was signed to proclaim freedom from colonial rule. Here, in front of the Liberty Bell, the symbol of American independence, King Hassan receives from the mayor a silver medallion making him an honorary citizen of the city. From Philadelphia, a special train carries the king and his official party for his next destination some 120 miles to the south. Washington, the nation's capital city, waits to welcome its distinguished visitor. At Union Station, President and Mrs. John F. Kennedy arrive and join high government officials and members of the diplomatic corps to greet the king. During the cordial exchange of greetings, His Majesty's sister, Her Royal Highness Lala Nezha, is presented with a bouquet of roses by Mrs. Kennedy. After meeting the waiting dignitaries, the King receives the President's warm welcome. Your Majesty, it is a high honor to welcome you once again to the United States. And I am confident that your visit here on this occasion will be as fruitful and as beneficial to both of our countries as the visit of your illustrious father with my predecessor, President Eisenhower, uh, several years ago. Though a, a wide ocean separates our two countries, they have been bound together throughout uh, our history. Your country was the first to recognize the United States in the most difficult days of our revolution. Our president, uh, first president, President Washington, sent our constitution to your country in 1789. And from that day to the present, the ties have been intimate in war and in peace. King Hassan expresses his personal pleasure and that of his people and his government to be able to greet the people of the United States and to meet their president. He also mentions the affection and admiration which Moroccans feel for Americans and says he hopes to consolidate the friendship which has existed between the two countries since the dawn of American independence. <laughs> Leaving the railroad station, the motorcade passes in front of the Capitol building, where the nation's legislative body meets. Waving to the crowds, the King of Morocco and the President of the United States ride slowly through the city. They pass the President's official residence, the White House, and continue on to the President's guest mansion for distinguished visitors, which is to be King Hassan's residence during his stay in Washington. One of His Majesty's first official acts in Washington is to pay a visit to Arlington National Cemetery, the last resting place for many of America's most honored war dead. Here at the
the Tomb of the Unknowns, a memorial to the nameless young Americans who have fallen in the cause of freedom, King Hassan pays his respects. Returning to the city, the king goes directly to the White House for his first conference with President Kennedy. Participating in the talks with the President are Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Assistant Secretary for African Affairs G. Menon Williams. That evening, the King returns to the White House for a state dinner at which he is the President's honored guest. The next day at the Moroccan Embassy, King Hassan is host at a luncheon for the American president. The Moroccan ambassador to the United States, Ali Benjaloun, joins the king in greeting Mr. Kennedy. Recalling the presentation of the American Constitution to the Emperor of Morocco in 1789, King Hassan gives the president a handsomely bound copy of the Moroccan Constitution. That night, King Hassan is host at a reception for the Washington Diplomatic Corps. Ambassadors representing most of the countries of the world meet the king. Assisting in welcoming the guests is His Majesty's brother, His Royal Highness Prince Moulay Abdallah and Princess Lala Nezha. His Majesty visits the Islamic Center, one of Washington's outstanding landmarks. This center serves not only as a place of worship, but also as an institution of learning for those studying Islamic culture. Greeted by the director of the center, Dr. Abdel Halim El Nagar, King Hassan is ushered inside to sign the register for distinguished visitors. Later, the king proceeds into the mosque for prayers. This mosque was built and is maintained by the contributions of 15 Muslim countries. Both the interior and the exterior of the center illustrate traditional Islamic architecture.
From the Islamic Center, King Hassan is driven along Massachusetts Avenue, where the embassies of many nations are located. During his visit, the king accepts an invitation to speak at the National Press Club. The National Press Club is one of the most important forums of public opinion in the United States. Its members include many distinguished journalists. Monsieur, c'est pour moi un grand privilège. It is a great privilege and an honor for me to speak in this very respected club, which is so esteemed and where so many great statesmen before me have spoken, and so many great statesmen who will come after me will speak on the problems in which you are interested. Beaucoup plus averti des choses internationales et de la chose publique viendront certainement ou sont venus vous faire des exposés sur les problèmes qui vous intéressent. My father before me came here proud and with a quiet conscience because he knew he was coming into the citadel of freedom and democracy. Why really is there so much friendship, so much sympathy, so much common feelings between two countries separated by an ocean, separated by language, separated even by the history of their civilizations? I believe that the answer to this question is the heroism of your own fight for generations and of the fight also of my own people for generations toward the same goal, toward the same ideal, the love of liberty. Later, at the invitation of the president, the king returned to the White House. Following their conversation, the president escorts the king to his majesty's residence. During their cordial talks, the two chiefs of state reaffirm the close friendship which has existed between their countries for generations. They discussed the economic development of Morocco and the welfare and progress of the people of Africa. Like his father's tour in 1957, King Hassan's visit to America ends in New York City. Here the king is accorded the traditional welcome for distinguished visitors, a parade up Broadway. Leaving his car, His Majesty continues on foot through the waving crowds to meet the mayor of America's largest city. From City Hall, the king is escorted to his official residence in the city. During his stay in New York, the king, with only a few members of his party, makes a brief informal tour of the heart of the city. Later, the king pays an official visit to the headquarters of the United Nations. Here in this world forum, where Morocco's flag flies proudly with the flags of all member nations, 
King Hassan, accompanied by his ambassador Ahmed Ben Hima, is greeted by the Secretary General U Thant. Moving to a beautiful mosaic made by a master craftsman in Fez and donated to the United Nations on behalf of the Moroccan people, King Hassan makes a short presentation speech. Excellence, Mesdames, Messieurs, c'est pour moi un très grand privilège. It is a privilege and a great honor to be here today as a representative of my country and my people to dedicate this mosaic. Yet at the same time, I feel much sadness and regret because another person should have been here today to make this symbolic gesture on this international ground. I am thinking, of course, of my lamented father, His Majesty King Mohammed V. Qui aurait dû aujourd'hui accomplir ce geste symbolique, et je pense ici même, dans cet édifice international, à mon regretté père, Sa Majesté Mohammed V. The panel thus takes its place as a permanent adornment of the United Nations building. By now, the King's visit to the United States is nearing its end. As he prepares to return home, His Majesty takes with him the respect and friendship of the American people and their good wishes for the happiness and prosperity of the Moroccan people. He also carries with him these parting words from his host, President Kennedy. I hope that what you have seen of us here will convey to you the sincerity and goodwill of the people of the United States toward you, toward Morocco, and to the cause of peace and freedom everywhere.